Hey everyone, it's Flames here again on another Magic Monday. And today's video is actually going to be a little different. I'm not going to showcase a deck, really. Uh, I will play a game later on just to show you guys how it's done. But I'm actually going to go over the basics of how Magic is played. Each deck consists of 60 cards at minimum. You can have more. It's generally not recommend though, unless in extreme circumstances. Uh, but the cards consist of lands, creatures, spells, and artifacts. Uh, so I'm going to show you basically how everything interacts. Every deck has to have lands to play any kind of creatures or spells, mainly. <clears throat> Here we have the five basic land types, plains, island, swamp, mountain, and forest. These are these five are the consist consist of or can can, can create any type of spell that you want to play. <clears throat> uh, each turn you can play one land and only one land. There are cards that allow you to play multiples, but we're not going to cover them right now. This is going to be a very basic video. But I've also included here uh, the scoured barons here. As you see, this is a land, uh, but it's not a basic land, as these are. There are cards that, that rely on basic lands, and you can fetch them out, but this is just a land. Uh, it provides either black or white mana, so you could play a black spell or a white spell, or use that mana to play another spell, and I'll cover over generic costs as well in a bit. But the downside to being able to play black or white is that it enters the battlefield tapped, so you can't use that mana right away. Uh, you also gain an extra life, that's an extra ability that this card gives you, but these <clears throat> these five cards are going to consist of most of your decks when you first start playing. Uh, next we have a creature. Mm -hmm. So as you see here, this is the Land of War Elves, mm -hmm. and it cost one green mana. Now this one green mana means a forest. You have to tap something that provides green mana, such as this forest, or if you had a dual land that says adds green or black, or green or red, or any other colors. As long as it says add blank, add green to your mana pool, you can play this land of War Elves. Now, this creature also has an activated ability. It, it is a mana ability, so it actually adds mana to your mana pool. One of the one of the first. Uh, errors that most players make when they first start playing Magic the Gathering is they believe that the, when you tap this and add green to your mana pool, mm -hmm. it means you go through your your deck and find a forest, put it on the battlefield, and you can use that mana right away. And no, mm -hmm. you actually have to tap this, and this is what generates the mana. Mm -hmm. You don't get to search for a forest. Mm -hmm. If you play a turn one forest, and then a turn, and then a land of where elves, and then next turn, you play another creature. Or next turn you try tapping this and, and tap this to get another one so you have two force and then you play your third force you're already playing it incorrectly uh, in reality it would just you would just tap this <clears throat> play an additional force if you like or are able to and then tap this and you generate just three mana you don't search for another land <clears throat> now the reason I say that you can do this next turn is that when a creature enters the battlefield it has summoning sickness now all permanents have summoning sickness technically. Um, mm -hmm. Even these island, even these lands do. So they, they if they were creatures, they would not be able to tap uh, on the turn that they came in. Now, mm -hmm. summoning sickness is a inherent ability. There's really there are creatures that have haste, which allow it to tap or attack the same turn that it's played. But um, it's that's a static ability. I'm not really going to cover it too too much here. We're we're going to move on to the next uh, card type, which is an instant. I got this unsummon here. Uh, so this costs one blue. So you'd have to tap an island or a land which produces blue mana to be able to cast this unsummon. Now this card is an instant, so you can play this any time that you have priority. And the way that priority works is everything goes onto a stack. And I'll show you this actually when we're playing the actual game later on. But everything goes on in the stack. And in that stack, it goes uh, active player, non active player. So if the active player whose turn it is is you, you can play an instant at any time. Once you play that instant, though, priority switches over to the non active player, your opponent, who can then play a counter spell or another spell that on top of that. <clears throat> or activate an ability, even. So. If I were to say play an unsummon against an opponent's line of war elves, 
He could then tap the land or elves as long as it does not have summoning sickness and would be able to generate one green mana before this actually resolves. And the way that it, it, the stack resolves top down. So you basically pile the cards theoretically onto a stack and then it resolves from the top to the bottom. We also have a dragon fodder, which is a sorcery and creates two tokens. Tokens are creatures, actually. The only thing is that they're technically not cards. So tokens are interesting because if they go to the graveyard, they also they actually do not exist once they hit the graveyard. They actually do hit the graveyard, but then state-based actions take over and say, well, you don't actually exist. So it removes it from the game completely. <clears throat> If they're exiled for any reason, they leave the game completely. And if they go to your hand, they actually leave the game as well. Because your hand cannot consist of tokens. They have no mana cost. <clears throat> and they have um, no way to play them outside of your hand. So they just vanish. They're gone. Mm -hmm. But this is a sorcery card. And as a sorcery, it means you can play it anytime you are... Anytime during your turn when you are the active player. Or when you have priority. So if it's my turn and I play Dragon Fodder, and then an opponent counterspells it, I could not, before the counterspell of Resolve, could not play another Dragon Fodder because it doesn't, it doesn't have, um, it doesn't have Flash or it's not an instant. It can only be played, it can't be played in response. Uh, now I could let the counterspell of Resolve and then play a second Dragon Fodder, which would work. Uh, so it's it's really understanding how the stack resolves and how everything meshes in together. <clears throat> we also have a gruesome deformity, which is a one black. Oh, actually, sorry, I'm going to go back to the dragon fodder for a brief moment. Uh, if you look here, it's it's got that little number one there and a red. Uh, that means you are required to tap a ma a mountain or any or generate any kind of red mana, but. That one means it could be any color. So I could tap a, a swamp and a mountain, and that'd be fine. I could tap a mountain and a scour barrens, and that would be fine. As long as I can generate the, the one mana in red and the one mana of any color, the spell works. Uh, so onto Gruesome Deformity. Uh, this is an enchantment. It's actually an, an enchantment aura. So what happens is that auras target creatures. Enchantments are kind of just world enchantments, and they don't we don't use that term anymore, but enchantments if they don't say enchantment aura they affect every player or the listed player in the in the text box uh so here we have gruesome deformity and we can enchant a creature uh enchanted creature gets intimidate so it can't be blocked except by artifact creatures and or creatures that share a color with it so this enchantment actually adds an ability to a creature so if we say we play turn one land war elves with tapping green mana and then the next turn we play a swamp and play gruesome deformity targeting our land war elves land war elves now gets intimidate so it can't be blocked by creatures except by creatures or by uh green creatures now the intimidate here doesn't really care about the color of the the enchantment here so it it, it won't be able to be blocked by black creatures due to just because it's a black enchantment uh, enchantments can only be played at sorcery speed, exception being an ability called Flash, the static ability, ability on cards, and that allows you to play the spell anytime you can play an instant. All right, moving on, we have Deft Duelist. Deft Duelist, as you see here, costs one white and one blue, which means you would have to tap a plains and an island, or you could tap an island and the Scoured Barrens because it does generate white mana. Uh, it has the ability First Strike, which means that it deals damage before another creature that does not have First Strike or Double Strike. So if you're going up against a land of war, if you're safe, if you are go to attack with Death Duelist mm -hmm. and your opponent blocks with land of war elves, Death Duelist will deal damage first because it has First Strike and land of war elves does not have First Strike or Double Strike. Mm -hmm. It would do two damage to land of war elves. The First Strike resolves. Mm -hmm. Land of War Elves sees okay. Well, I have or the game sees that Land of War Elves has a has one one, and you dealt two damage to it, making its toughness or bring, uh, doing more damage than its toughness, and destroys Land of War Elves due to state based actions. It also has Shroud, which is an ability is a static ability as well, which means that it can't be the target of spells or abilities. Uh, Shroud is an older version of a, a an ability called Hexproof. 
Hexproof means that your opponent cannot target this creature with spells or abilities. Shroud has an issue where if I were to play Gruesome Deformity and try to target Death Duelist, I would not be able to. It actually would not even allow me to play it because I don't have any creature to enchant that's legal. So Shroud blocks that ability or blocks me from being able to do that. Um, that's just something to keep an eye out when if you're trying to build decks yourself. You want to make sure that everything does mesh properly. Um, here is a colorless card. So as you see here, we have the five main colors. See here are the five main colors, white, blue, black, red, green, or Warbig. Warburg. Um, but this is actually has no color. And the reason being is that this color, this creature can be played with using seven mana of any color. So you could tap one, two, three, four, five, six, and then say you had another forest or something like that. You could tap all, any any color at all to be able to play this Hexproof Roam. Now it doesn't have any special abilities. It's just a five seven for seven. But the reason you would play it is because, or reason you would want to play something like this, not this exactly, would be because of the fact that you you're not you're not confined to a color to cast this. Um, it's good if you have like a multicolor deck, three or more colors, to be able to kind of offset the restriction of, in, of requiring to have the right lands at the right time by using some colorless creatures that can give you at least a, ba a bit of a backup or anything like that. Uh, next we have an artifact, and again, everything gets summoning sickness. Uh, it, summoning sickness resolves or re is removed once the creature is under your control during your upkeep and I'll, sh I'll show you the phases of the game as we play um but here but summoning sickness does not affect artifacts uh so here we have one and sacrifice traveler's amulet we can search our library for a basic land card reveal it and put it into our hand then we shuffle our library and most cards that require you to look through your library for a card are going to require that you shuffle afterwards but you see, um, we could search up for a forest, a mountain, a swamp, an island, a plains, and that's all because of this little word here, basic land. Mm -hmm. We could not look up a scoured barrens because it does not say basic land. It just says land. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the stipulations you want to keep an eye out for. Um, but, but that's pretty much the basics of artifacts. Right? Realistically, most of these things come down to just read the card, and it'll tell you what the card says what to do. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to cover really here is Blade of the Blood Chief. Uh, this is an artifact equipment. So it costs one just to put it on the battlefield. And then um, you can equip it for one. So you equip that at sorcery speed, so you can't do it on the fly. You have to do it when there's nothing on the stack and when it's your turn and when you have priority. Um, but whenever a creature dies, you put a 1-1 one -one counter on an equipped creature. If equipped creature is a vampire, put two 1-1 one -one counters on it instead. You have to have this equipped for this to to resolve because it does say put a woman counter on an equipped creature. If it's not equipped, nothing happens. Uh, but if I were to say have a land of War elves out and then and then have a blade of the blood sheave and equipped it to the land of War elves, and something on a an opponent's side dies or anything like that, once it dies, we would then get the trigger of the blood sheaf, which would then add the 1 1 counter to the creature. Now, it's not a vampire, so it wouldn't get two 1 1 counters, but it does get at least the one. Mm -hmm. um, so, that's pretty much the basic of the layout here. Um, I didn't want to go too, too in depth with all the abilities, all the skills, and everything like that, but I did want to at least cover what's required when you're playing the game. Um, I'm going to actually show you one of my decks I have. Uh, we're going to do Celestia Silver Slivers. So this deck um, is designed to have a lot of very low-cost creatures that have static abilities. And here we have our lands. We have Basic Forest, Basic Plains, mm -hmm. and the same idea. The, um, the Blossoming Sands is much like the Scoured Barrens, where it enters Battlefield Tapped, it gives you one life, and you can tap it for green or for white. Mm -hmm. I also have other little lands here. Um, this one... It's just battlefield tapped, but I can cycle it, which is an ability, as you see there. If I pay one white, I can discard the card to draw another card. Mm -hmm. And this one's the same, but in blue. Or, sorry, in green. Mm -hmm. uh, here we have a bunch of white creatures. We got a plate sl sliver, sidewander sliver, mm -hmm. sentinel sliver, and sinew sliver. As you see, uh, they cost white. These ones cost just one white mana. 
and these ones cost one and a white mana. So I can use a force to pay for that one, and then pl and then uh, use a planes to pay for the white. Mm -hmm. These are my green ones. Mm -hmm. Virulent silver sliver, muscle sliver, predatory sliver, and spinneret sliver. They, as you see here, uh, all sliver creatures have reach. This is actually why the deck is called slivers. Um, every single card here affects the others. So this one would give all my creatures vigilance. This one gives all my creatures plus one plus one. This one gives all my creatures plus one plus one. Again, plus one plus one. All my slivers creatures will have reach. Virulent Silver gives everything poisonous. That's a whole other thing. I'm not going to deal too much with that, um, but it is a additional option of a win. Uh, all Silver creatures have flanking, which is another again another old school um, ability. But uh, if, whenever a creature without flanking blocks a Sliver, the blocking creature gets minus one minus one until end of turn. So that actually most people don't know what flanking even is. So it can swing the games a little bit. And this mm -hmm. one just gives slivers plus zero plus one, so it buffs up its toughness a bit. Mm -hmm. um, this this was the sorcery, so I can play this during my turn when there's nothing on the stack, and it lets me create two one one colorless sliver tokens. Mm -hmm. uh, here we go. Where was that? Mm -hmm. We have thrill the hunt, where target creature gets plus one plus two until end of turn, and it's an instant. So the goal of this would be to attack in with thrill the hunt, or attack in with a sliver. If they declare blockers and it's an unfavorable block where my sliver is going to most likely die, I can play Thrill the Hunt for a green. The sliver gets plus one plus two till end of turn, and then that might work. I can also let it resolve, and then since the stack's empty, it asks, does anyone have any more plays? And I'll say, yes, I have another one, and I can use that flashback ability where I can play it again from the graveyard for one white. So I can give it plus two plus four for one green and one white in that order. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also have this card, Vines of Vastwood. It's another instant, so I can play it at any, any time. But it allows the my creature to not be able to be the target of spells or abilities my creature control that turn. So that does expire at the end of the turn. You'll see the phases where actually the end phase is. But if Vines of Vastwood is kicked, that creature gets plus one, four, plus four until end of turn. So you see a little kicker cost. I may pay an additional green as I cast a spell. So that's just a little extra bonus. Two green to give it hexproof and plus four plus four. It's not a big deal at all. It's actually pretty sweet. And then Journey to Nowhere is our enchantment. So again, enchantment's going to be played on my turn at sorcery speed when there's nothing on the stack, but it allows me to exile a creature that an opponent controls or even my own if need be. And then the, the stipulation is though, if they get rid of Journey to Nowhere somehow, it, the card returns to their control. So that's kind of the basic of this deck. Um, I'm going to go to the play lobby now and see if we can find a game to play with Pot and Popper. And it looks like we actually have one. Maybe open. So, select slivers. And we're going to go up against So Straco, looks like. So, we roll the dice to see who goes first. I rolled higher, so I get to choose. Uh, if you go in the play first, you get to make your first actions, but you do not get to draw a card. Generally, though, making your first action is fav more favorable. Um, we're gonna. You also have a chance to mulligan if you do not like your hand. You can mulligan, shuffle all these cards back into your hand, and then put them, and then um, draw six cards instead of seven. I'm actually gonna keep this. If you do decide to draw six, you get to scry one, which is you look at the top card of your deck, and then you can choose to put it on the bottom or the top. Um, so turn one play, we're actually going to drop the planes. That's my one turn for the, the that's my one land for the, the turn, and then play play the sliver. So I tap that to generate the white mana, and our opponent apparently does not like slivers. <laughs> um, okay, I don't think we're gonna go back and try to play them. So let's see if we can find another player. So Obo, play up against. Right, so he rolled a 5, I rolled a 2, so he gets to choose if he like to go on the play or the draw. But down here you see the different phases of the turn. So the first phase is the untap phase. This is where all your creatures and lands untap. Uh, I gotta decide if I like this hand, and I do actually. And we'll keep this. Uh, so untap is where your, your lands untap, your creatures untap, your artifacts, everything untaps. Uh, upkeep is where 
a certain cards will require in the beginning of your upkeep. That's uh, the different phase to differentiate between the different um, parts of the, the turn. We then get the draw card in the draw phase, and the main phase is actually where we start being able to play stuff. The main phase, as you saw, is where I played my land at. Once you've done casting all your spells or anything like that, you can then go to the begin combat phase. We're going to drop that in Predatory Sliver. Uh, once in the beginning, begin combat, that's where you could play instants and some abilities do activate. The attack phase is actually where you would declare attackers, what you would like to do. I transmuted that. Okay. The block phase is where the opponent decides what they would like to block. And lastly, the damage phase is where actual damage is done. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. So, that was the attack phase. Now he's in the block phase. He doesn't have any creatures to block, so kind of skips over that. And then the damage phase and end combat take place. And my damage is actually dealt to the opponent. Uh, after combat, you then have an actual main, a second main phase where you can play more spells or more skill or uh, more abilities if you'd like. And then lastly, and then lastly, you have the end phase, which is where the turn actually ends and everything wraps up. And then the cleanup phase, which is where everything, every every bit of damage falls off. So here we're actually going to probably rush out. And just swing in a bit. I don't think I can actually. Because he's got protection from monocolored. I can't quite play Journey to Nowhere against it. But we can swing in here. With two four fours. So he blocks one. Uh, so as you see here, my muscle sliver, sliver has two damage to it. If that hits four, it dies. But during the cleanup phase, all that damage goes away. My sliver is now able to is now able to take four damage again. You have to do the exact. You have to do as much damage as toughness in one turn. So it looks like our opponent is playing a interesting uh, Orzhov deck. Orz um The reason I say Orzhov, I, I just realized. Uh, the reason I say Orzhov is that. There are ten clans or guilds, actually, in Pestilence. No creatures. Huh. So the reason I said Orzov is that um, there are these um, ten guilds in a plane called Ravnica, and in Ravnica. The black white group is called Orzov. Uh, if you saw my other, other earlier video, I had a deck called Is It Blitz. Uh, is It Blitz is designed to. Oh, okay. Uh, is It Blitz is blue red, which is the Is It Guild. And um, there's other ones, like this one, if you saw earlier, is named Selesnia Slivers. That's because green white is the Selesnia Guild. Um, if you look into it, actually, the stories behind the guilds is actually very interesting. Magic is uh, magic is a great card game, but their stories and their characters are really, really interesting. Uh, so at least he's playing Journey Nowhere on something. Probably, yep, yeah, getting rid of all my slivers. And he's going to tap three to get rid of everything, or tap the three to get rid of everything. Mm -hmm. That is, that is very, very nice play. I have never thought of that. So basically now we're in a bit of a race. I want to get... Because I can't... I don't think this is going to work. But I also don't... Yeah, that, that just flip fizzles. Um, so he has to, pay, he loses one life each turn due to pestilence just to get rid of what I have. But on the same side, like, he really can't quite 
I don't know if he'll be able to outrace me. Uh, if you notice, though, we started at 20 life each, and the goal is to get everyone to get the opponent down to zero. There are alternative win conditions. If I get lucky, I can get. Oh wow, that is nice. If I can get lucky and uh, get, yeah, I figured that was gonna happen. If I can get lucky and get um, poisonous sliver without before this whole pestilence combo goes off, uh, I might be able to show you another win condition called poison counters. Cycle this. That really doesn't help me much right now. I want to hold on to this. Saving Rift Watcher. Hmm. He's actually able to gain most of his life back, it looks like. Unfortunately, I'm taking four damage. That's not great. Okay, on the planes, not what I need. So, yeah, this is the stack, as you see. It's actually named the stack. Uh, this is where you order the... This is the, where you set the order of what resolves first and when. Uh, pretty much, he's going to just wrap this up here. You know, swing for six damage, and he wants to pass the lens, and that's game. So we're just going to concede to save some time. And begin sideboarding. Now, sideboarding, this deck I don't have a sideboard for yet, but so a sideboard's 15 cards that you can, you can add to your deck during rounds, so like if I had something that was good against enchantments, I should have added it into here. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't think far enough ahead and decided to run this sideboardless. So we're just going to submit the deck here um, and just hope we can outramp the opponent, really. I don't believe Vines of, I mean, Vines of Vastwood would help keep stuff alive until end of turn, but he'll just end up pestilencing again. And since we lost the last game, we actually get to choose if we like to play first or not, and we will. And this isn't bad. Uh, we're going to keep this, actually. Turn one, drop planes, drop plane to sliver. And pass the turn. So, the, this uh, actually, as you see, all sliver creatures, including itself even, which is very nice about these. So we're gonna drop a forest, and then muscle sliver. Attack in for two. Next turn we'll attack in for six. He just undoes all the work I just did. Whenever wall of hope is dealt damage, you gain that much life. Okay. Um, so it's kind of not much of an incentive for me to actually swing in, but the difference being, oh, I should have played Blossoming Sands instead. Um, the difference being, I actually can do three damage. So it makes more sense for me to actually give them the three damage, deal three damage at the same time, and then they kind of just cycles back, or goes back. Okay, or he just doesn't block. That's interesting. Oh, uh, that's a counter for Pestilence. Because Pestilence will do the one damage to Wall of Hope. And then he actually gains the one life to counteract the one life he would have lost through Pestilence. But it looks like he doesn't have any black mana yet. So he can't really play. Alright. We'll do that. Then we'll play Blossoming Sands. I mean, the opponent's looking down a pretty, pretty, pretty bad board right now. And the 9. 
I mean, next turn is lethal unless you can start going off. Okay, Journey's Nova or something. Probably gonna either either sinew or muscle sliver. Okay, yep. Place an Orzal Basilica and bounces back at Kabir across the crossroad. Ooh, that's a fun one. Okay, I need... Okay, we're going to... Place slide Sidewinder. So yeah, I can destroy Wall of Hope even if he blocks it, one of the threes. Uh, then we're going to cycle. Let's play in this secluded step. And we'll play the planes, I guess. We're going to attack in with everything. That's how we roll, except for I can't attack on that one, I guess. <laughs> so Wall of Hope is actually going to, if it does block, yeah, it becomes a minus one, two. He gets three damage dealt to him, so he goes up to eight, but he was at nine, so it's, it's an alright trade-off. He needs to be able to um, pull off Pestilence combo now, because I'm looking at two, four, six, nine. He's got ten. If I can get a uh, muscle sliver or anything to give my character, my creatures plus one plus one, that would be good. Uh, we're gonna sacrifice that one. Not a huge deal. Again, if I can get a muscle or sinew sliver, that'd be great. He's got two mana available, so another wall of hope. It looks like. Yep. thinking. I don't blame him. This is actually a very interesting board state here. Right. His wall has defender, which means he cannot block with it. And that's exactly what we want. So now he can't block with, uh, the Wall of Hope to gain the life back. So we're going to target Wall of Hope. Great. Play the Blossoming Sands just for the extra life gain, because why not? And move to combat. Attack with all creatures. And our opponent is down to three. So if he wants to get rid of my board, he's going to have to die with Pestilence. Uh, not, not to say he doesn't even have the mana available with this. Yeah. Staying alive by a thread right now. Please disown ancestor. Guardian of the Guild Pact. Ooh, okay. Um, and this is game, actually, just by me drawing that. We're going to get rid of disown ancestor because I can't target Guardian of the Guild Pact. Yep, and opponent gives it up. So, looks to be sideboard again. And. We have no sideboard, so we'll just submit the deck. Um, but games are best of, well, not really the best of, best of three. It's actually uh, first to two wins, uh, which means that if you do draw the first game, you can actually play three games. Um, or even four, I guess, really, doing the math. Um, that you really only ever see in like tournament style stuff. Most people just play one game, maybe two games with the same deck, don't even bother sideboarding. It's just, it's a fun game to play. That's pretty much all I can think of to say. Um, we have no green mana. I'm actually going to mulligan this, and we'll see what we get. We have one green mana, two green mana, and a planes. Um, and the thing being, it might be better to get... Uh, we're going to keep this. Oh, put that on top, that's for sure. Uh... Opponent goes first as he lost. Looks like he chose to go in the play. It's fine. We're gonna draw that muscle set of sliver. Play a blossom of sands, get a life back. Oh. So 
so we're going to be able to predatory sliver this turn and then next turn start dropping flanking and other creatures oh don't have enough mana yet there you go you have to play your your land before you decide to cast a spell so green great So next turn, I can drop two Sidewinder slide slide Slivers. Ooh, that forces me to sacrifice my Sliver. So next turn, we can drop two Sidewinders. Or if we get a non or a basic land, we can drop a Sidewinder and a Sentinel. Or a Virulent. That's actually pretty cool. Uh, we're going to play this because we do need it. Add green white there we go so earlier I was talking about poisonous and poison counters on on opponents um, poison counters are a go on a player so when virulent sliver or any sliver now at this point since it's everything's got poisonous one whenever someone gets a poison counter or when someone gets 10 poison counters actually they get they lose the game um, so we're gonna do that and we're gonna drop you so you'll see that these will trigger and up here you'll see a little poison counter show up and he should get two poison counters because I have two instances of poisonous one if I have four virulent slivers out it actually will trigger each each uh, instance of poisonous one counts, so he would get four poison counters per each one attacking. It's a very quick way to end the game, but he's got two poison counters now. If I can get him to ten, regardless of how much life he has or any other situations, he loses the game. And it looks like he's probably going to start trying to get rid of my board state. So, ooh, this is actually good. We are going to end. Let's add another poison counter to the party. Uh, we're going to be swinging in for eight poison counters. Not to mention the actual eight damage we're doing. See? That's the stack. So, <laughs> first one triggers, second one triggers, third one triggers, fourth one triggers, fifth one triggers. Yeah, there you go. And that's the game. That is literally it. <laughs> oh. So uh, send the GGs out to the opponent. That was a uh, <laughs> that was uh, a fun one. I actually I, I really do en enjoy that deck. It's it, it it's a really good synergy between all the all the uh, creatures you can play, and it doesn't really it doesn't really even cost that much. Um. If you guys are interested in this video, let me know. Uh, I really enjoyed playing Magic, and I'm happy to see, happy to help other players learn how to play it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to send me a message. Uh, I mostly play Pauper online uh, due to the fact that it's a very low cost format. Most of these decks cost like less than five bucks, and uh, there's also free bots available that you could get free cards from, uh, so you can start brewing some stuff up. Uh, let me get my collection. I'll show you some of the stuff that I just start to throw together. But I'm working on a two ideas for madness decks which is an ability um we have rakdos and dimir these are again two uh, ravnica guilds dimir being blue black and rakdos being red black but as you see here the design is you get rid of cards you discard cards and it lets you cast it for much cheaper spells um i'll probably cover both these eventually in the future but if you guys enjoy this video please let me know send a like send a subscription send a comment below let me know how you think let me know if you caught maybe a misplay that i made or need something clarified i'd be happy to happy to help anyone else play i hope you all have a great day and i will talk to you later bye